Back on the old 830, moving on up to an 870 case motor. Put bearing guard in, did all that. Did we actually cheat the machinist or didn't we, Connor? Uh, we'll find out. Looks, how long has it been? It's been months. I'd say it's been at least a year. About a year this crank's been sitting in a bag covered up with luber plate. Yep, backyard uh, polish job on it. Yep, backyard polisher, which is a video I did. So we're gonna try to set this in there and get it timed up right. Um, what we might have to do, Connor, is put the crank in and then lift it up on this end and just turn the cam gear till it lines up. You, know? you act like it's heavy or something. Oh, Hold on, don't kill yourself. Right, what are you lifting the whole thing for? Yeah, it's heavy. You got the timing mark pointing straight up? Well, where would you want it pointing? Straight up? Yeah, that's where I got it. Okay, you want me to have the smart end? <laughs> stupid end. Yeah, I do want you to have the smart end. <laughs> All right, I don't know where the mark is. It's right by your pointer finger. That's right where we want it. Right, like We that. can't put it there. Okay? I'm fine, are we good? Yeah, so far. Tell me it just timed itself. No, it's sitting up high on a gear. All right, where is the dot? Now I see it. Oh, I gotta turn it that way. Yeah, it's gotta turn that way. Ready? Yeah. It's okay, you don't have to lift it. Are you good? Yeah. Think you're getting timed? No, but see, that's gonna be in the way there. I got one more tooth to go. It's timed. It's timed. I don't think it's gonna show up on this. There's two, two circles. Yep. One on each gear, and then there's that center circle. And then that tooth goes right between those two teeth, and that's how that gets timed up. And then there's no other timing that's until it. after that it goes from the... Until the injection pump. Injection pump, and that's timed between the... When the cover's on, with the pulley marks get lined up to 20, 29, center, and then blah, blah, blah. 29 before. Does the pump have a lock in it? Nah, I don't think it's like a pee pump on a comp. We'll have to revisit that. We're gonna have to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. We didn't disassemble this engine. No, we got, it, no we got it in the basket. Engines, so. Wouldn't matter if we did. <laughs> I wouldn't remember it anyway. anyways. I forgot where I left the book, let alone what's in it. <laughs> Not want to go. Oh, it's hitting. The, it's hitting that bolt. That bolt. That's weird. Yeah, it's hitting the bolt for that gear that's there for the yeah, counter shaft you know counterweight. There's only, there's only one position to get that in. It's the bottom or top. So that's the first one we got to get together because the rest of them will have to follow. Yeah, that's a that's pain. what's going on. That's a pain. Can you pull it up? You got it. There you go. Look at that. What a nice job. <laughs> You're gonna say something not good. <laughs> Probably wanna edit that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's gotta get shoved down just a hair. It See does. It? Ah, How about my thumbnail? Did nope, my thumbnail, thumbnail ain't pushing it. Did you get it? No. A little screwdriver, put a rag around it and just give it a little pop. Shoved the whole daggum piston down again, didn't it? Yes, it did. There, now that it's down, we do it by hand. Well, they don't want to spin too easy, do they? It's kind of a good thing. One of us has to hold the piston. The okay. other one has to hit it. Okay. You got it? Yep. So now it's just a matter of starting to put the caps on. We're going to plastic gauge this as we go to make sure things aren't completely out of whack. Well, the plastic gauge in there. We're going to take our word for it. <laughs> just a little strip of plastic went across the whole journal. Yeah, strip of plastic. That's all it is. How the heck does that work? Works great. I know, but it's, it's a strip of plastic that gets squished out. Because it's extruded. It's extruded perfectly the perfectly right size. Perfectly the I right hope. size, based on the uh, painted markings on that piece of paper. Yeah, and then you go by this. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar with plastic it. gauge or not, but that's how you read it. Well, I trust it more than this. <laughs> <laughs> Trust it more than you trust us with that. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> What's this thing? <laughs> Calibration date. Uh, 1814. 
Got them off eBay. Yeah, sure. So I'm gonna do number three next. Now what are you doing? I'm getting the plastic gauge off of where I, where I put it. So he's been plastic gauging this thing, and everything's coming up. What between three and four? Yes, everything's here. Check it out. There we go. And this is one that's spun. Right, this is a spun bearing. As it gets, that's three thousandths. Mm -hmm. Right, four thousandths. Mm -hmm. So it's in between three and four thousandths, which is like right in the middle of the of the range we're shooting for. Yeah. So it's really six maximum, right? Really perfect. And I use multiple plastic gauges yep. just to try and Bounce measure it out. measure if it's right, and it's really really nice. Those two points, they're not quite ninety. Well, what's nice about these other. is they're both the same, so that that kind of takes away out of roundness. I think we're getting away with it. Well, we'll know for it's sure. Like well, we the one time you can really. <laughs> it's not. Well, all we did is take transfer off the crank. That was the big. That was now, the these bearings part. didn't spin repeatedly in here. It was obvious. I mean, they did spin. They spun once. The story was the bulldozer got flopped over on its side. It was idling and it stopped running. So. And that was tight. I mean, they were they were seized on there. That the motor didn't spin until I started taking things apart. Continue on with this saga. We'll see what happens. How about cleanliness, huh? Yep, nice clean, under the cap. Nice, even it up nice. Hey, where'd my knife go? Right here. Oh, you call that a knife? A little bit of assembly lube will hold that in place for you. Yep, and that's a good way to keep it on the edge if you're gonna do more than one piece. If you've got thousands of dollars in measuring equipment, go ahead and use it. The plastic gauge is like a couple bucks. Yeah, you that's know. not perfect for everything. Yeah, you should check your crank and stuff when it's out for that type of thing. Because you can be, the book says on this engine we were allowed to be two thousandths out around. Yeah, that's not yeah. much. How many of these old engines running right now are <laughs> more than two thousand? Completely egg shaped. Anyways, these are really tight too, tight tolerances. So I kind of get it balanced there. You gotta give it a little tap to drop it in. Bolts. No, I'm using the bolts to run it in. Clean my bolts. Clean the mineral spirits off them. And then I got some motor oil for the treads. You just want to slowly walk it down, one side at a time. Just not too much on one side. Right, evenly. You don't just take an impact, you just run, run that bolt down tight. It'll go in crooked for sure. Yeah. Because these are notched in, you can see them, they're saddled in. They fit They fit between the block. And they're really heavy duty. So Everything's they're, they're tight. They're hard to get in by, by hand and they're hard to get back out too. So you're going back and forth. Pretty much, and we're not even touching the cap yet, so we're not really even starting to draw on it. Starting to touch there, and you'll feel one get tight and the other one will loosen up. Yeah, because trying to keep it straight as it goes down in. So as soon as you feel it tighten up, kind of, you, you want to switch to the other one. Keep going back and forth. I've got the torque wrench sets for 50 foot-pounds. These have to go up to about 145 foot-pounds. And I've just been two-stepping it from 50. Doing the old Texas two-step. Yepper. Oh, I can see it's settling down now. Yep. In place, Ooh. we go to our first 50. And then just gonna jump it right up. Which is about all you get out of this here craftsman. Yeah, we're just about to the end of that torque wrench, aren't we? It goes to 150. <laughs> but this is just pretty handy to use. So you want this, because we don't want to use all that tension on the torque wrench to back that bolt back nah, out. So we go to a breaker bar. I don't bar. break things off of the torque wrench. I no. got this nice breaker bar. I just kind of put my hip into it. And now we're going to see what the plastic gauge says. I was watching a video the other day and a guy was checking with plastic gauge and he's using TTY bolts, yeah. torque to yield, uh -huh. also known as stretch bolts, stretch bolts. also known as one-time use throw them away bolts. So I don't know if he was get, if he had a whole new set of bolts after plastic gauging, if he's going to put a whole new set of bolts in. It would be like 30 bucks, you know, it's not a lot of money, but I'm afraid he would put the motor together with those already stretched out torque bolts. And I think uh, he probably didn't get real far with that. By the way, I kind of gave it a rock with the bolts because you get leverage. Rock it out. Yeah, they're snug in there once they get set down in there. Put a lot of upward force on it as much as you can. Okay. Put your manly forearms. There we go. 
Okay, that looks like three to me. Get the scale out. Oh, wrong side. There's the four, there's the three, and so once four? again, it's between- Three and four. It's between three and four. It's squished down a little bit bigger than four, and- I don't know So the tighter tolerance four. actually makes the plastic gauge wider. The tighter tolerance makes the plastic gauge wider. And that's how that works, that's yep. principle. So four, three, between, I'd say it's closer to four on that side. But that's well within range, we're good. Beautiful, Con. We're going back in, locks to locks, number two cap. Same way we put the plastic gauge in. So I get it kind of level there. Can get the wrench on it. Too slippery. That's all that oil I put on. Oil? Lots of oil. So that's what I've done here. I've put everything at 50. And you can rotate it around. I mean, if we were doing this engine with the pistons not in the way, you put the crank in, you could spin it the whole time you're building it to make sure there's no tight spots. And you could torque it right down the final torque and have a spinning crank yeah. in there without any rods in the way. Yep. Not exactly in that boat. Nope, we're in an entirely different boat. And yes. This side that comes out just a touch. So I'm gonna run this down to level that out. There it goes. I'm gonna loosen this one right back up. So wh anyways, what I'm gonna do next is, once I get all these plastic gauge, which we only have one more to go, going to torque down all the main caps to the real torque spec and spin the motor over and see how it goes. And then we're gonna do the rods, which is 95 to 105. I don't think we're gonna have any issues. No, I think we'll be good. Yep. Anyway, the new bearings do look better than the old ones. <laughs> Especially this, <laughs> this one got pretty beat up. I would say it's night and day. But. We're lucky to find these bearings. I had to call a motor building shop to get them. I mean, you couldn't just order them. I couldn't even get them from Case. Obsolete. Obsolete. Well, 1984 doesn't seem that long ago, does it? I wasn't born yet. <laughs> oh, you got to keep rubbing that in. Seems kind of long for me. Yeah, I'm afraid that upper four looks like a one, but it's not because there's one. Can't get too mixed up with only four cylinders. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, Connor. That's my thumb. That's my fingerprint on that crankshaft. That's your fingerprint. A little bit of rusty residue there. Yeah, our fingers are full of acid. So you're gonna plastic gauge that one too. Yep. I'm going to a different project. Well, guys, that's good enough for right now. We got quite a bit done on it. Pretty happy with it. Not putting any full time into it or anything. Just um, turn a wrench when we uh, get to it. So, anyway, I hope you liked the video. Like and subscribe. See you on the next one.